What is up, guys? This is Pinzo back with another video today. And what I have for you guys is patch notes. We have the Revenant patch. Well, the post Revenant patch patch notes. This is going to be what's in between Revenant and Shinbi. We got the patch notes today, but they will go live on Tuesday, February 7th. So next Tuesday, if you're watching this when it comes out, uh, they're pretty good. We'll get into it. But before we do, I'm st am still sponsored by HelloFresh for the next couple of days, so there will be a link to that in the description. You can use my code 21 free meals plus free shipping. Uh, it's a really good deal, US only, unfortunately. But if you guys want to help me out and get some good food while you're at it, that's a really easy way to do it. Uh, if you guys want to enjoy the content, be sure to leave a like and a subscribe. But we are going to jump into these patch notes. I went over these first on stream, but I figured I would re-record this and just make sure that I, I have my thoughts a little more concise for you guys on YouTube. So if you guys want to stop and read these, you can uh, pause and read the whole things. Basically, this is saying uh, they're going to buff towers a little bit because they don't do anything. They're going to fix carries in the next patch. So in the Shinbi patch is when they will be fixing carries and the carry items. So that's why carries aren't really getting touched today. Don't complain. They're doing it next patch. Uh, so this is matchmaking improvements. They tighten some matchmaking parameters. If you guys are five stacking, you're going to be waiting a while. It sounds like you will be playing primarily against five stacks. It doesn't sound like that's guaranteed, but it sounds like that this will fix some of that issue. If you guys are at the top end, hopefully you guys don't get stuck against five stacks every game. I... I I get it. Um, hero changes. So this is basically they are. Uh, first of all, Fountain now heals faster. Love that. I I there are I at once a game I would leave the Fountain not full health or mana because it doesn't heal fast enough. So that's really nice. S factor. This is basically how fast a hero scales on their base uh stats. So they're front loading this a little bit so that you gain more health and mana at the early levels of a game, and then it trails off a little bit. So you end the game with the same amount of stats, but they're front-loading it a little bit. So you at level 5, you'll have more health, more mana than you did before, even though at level 18, you'll have the same amount. So it's it's just front-loading it. They're trying to slow down time to kill early game. I think we just have to wait on how this is. I, I personally think time to kill early game is very dependent on who you play it feels like certain classes have a really fast time to kills early game and certain classes have really slow like mages can't kill anyone before 10 minutes but uh carries for some reason do really well before 10 minutes i i'm not i'm not positive on on how I, all of that interacts but we'll see how this goes moving into this is heroes uh balancing countess is the first one up she's gonna get her passive nerfed uh maxing out at 15% lifesteal rather than 20%. I think that's a good change. Her blade siphon, her right click is getting the healing scaling reduced. This will matter only if you're building hybrid. If you're full damage, you will heal uh, actually more from this. Uh, if you have more than 400 power, you will heal more from blade siphon now than you did before. Even tied, same thing. If you have more than 400 power, this will item this uh, will actually hit harder. They're just taking power out of her base numbers and putting it into her scaling, which I don't mind. It incentivizes building damage. I don't think this stops the the tank countess. We'll get into some of the items later. I think it's I think it'll still be playable. It won't be as good, obviously, but it'll still be playable. Bang Mao. So, uh, bug fix. That's just a. Uh, uh, was written poorly on his passive his ultimate this change looks really weird apparently they there were people that were abusing like hybrid tanky fang mao uh i think that was pretty bad i don't i guess his passive has free damage in it if you're really good at using it but i i don't think that's very good anyways his ultimate got some power scaling reduced from it and some physical power scaling uh reduced from it on the on the execute so it got penetration scaling increased for those of you who don't know feng mao's execute scales off of a couple things it scales off of base damage physical power and penetration so the more flat penetration that you have on feng mao your execute actually hits harder so or it executes at a higher health threshold so if you have so now it's 350 percent. if you have 20 flat penetration this means it will add 70 damage to your execute threshold uh just know if you're building full assassin this doesn't change anything if you're building him hybrid your execute won't be quite as useful that's all there is to it Faye gets a little bit of base health uh and her q hits a little bit harder 
I already thought Faye was pretty good. This just makes her a little better. Uh, keep in mind their front loading health as well. You'll be pretty like you'll you'll be kind of tanky on Faye now before like you know level seven eight. You'll you'll be pretty hard to kill. Gideon is getting some mana increases. Apparently he was too mana efficient, so they're increasing the mana cost on his Q and his E, and his Q is getting a five percent scaling increase. Keep in mind they increased the scaling on his Q last patch by five percent. So this is actually up 10% from where it was a couple patches ago. I think the problems with Gideon are not in his are not in his damaging abilities. His Q and his his right click are both good. His E is pretty good. His ultimate is not very good. And I think that's there there if they put too much power in his other abilities, I I don't know what they're going to do to him. I think this is fine. He's not going to be broken. I think he competes a little better in lane with some of the other carry or with some of the other mids now. Howitzer, uh, bug fix on his right click, which is just a description thing, and his Q gets another 5% damage on it. Similar to the Gideon thing, this is a pretty easy to hit ability once you get used to it, long range, not very splash damage, you're not going to hit like three people with this most of the time. I think this change is fine, I think that mid laners right now struggle to keep up late game, they just don't do enough damage, so I, I like that they're getting a little bit of scaling increases. Kalari. This looks like a lot. This Kalari change looks like they're changing a lot of stuff. Okay, so just calm down for a minute. She is not going to attack as fast. Her base attack speed goes down a little bit. Her attack speed per level goes down a little bit. Uh, her death mark was apparently doing like almost twice as much scaling as it should, so that got fixed. And then her dagger gets 5% scaling taken off of it, which two daggers is 10% scaling, blah blah blah. This, that having 90% scaling already is insane. It shouldn't have that, but it does. So that's okay. This is only going to slow down your clear for until like level three, and then you'll be back online. It'll all, really only slow down your red buff clear. Kalari is really good at single target damage, obviously. So clearing a red buff on Kalari is a little easier than it is on someone like, you know, Rampage. Uh, so this is just to bring her first couple levels of clear in line with the rest of the characters in the game. I don't think this is too much of a change to her at all. I think she'll still be good. She'll still pub stomp. Still a good character. Bellica. This is where we get a little spicy. Bellica's Q, which got buffed last patch, getting another buff. Cooldown decreased by two seconds. Late game. Doesn't, doesn't change early game, really, but late game, two seconds. 5% more scaling on it as well. That's not... You're talking about 5% and two seconds off of it. You're going to be able to stun all the time on this character. Uh... Void Drone got fixed last patch to where now it sucks the correct amount of mana and it does the correct amount of damage. They're adding 10% scaling per shot to this. I thought this ability was already pretty underrated in this current patch that we're on, and now it is even better. It, it does 10% more damage per shot. Obviously, this is kind of a, can you put this in a place where the enemy can't kill it or use it in the middle of a fight the enemy can't get to it? You know, how many shots does this get off? Obviously, that comes into play. Still a really good thing. Uh, base damage on Void Bomb goes up by 20 late game. I don't think that really changes anything, but more damage is more damage. I think Bell was already pretty good. I would I would watch out for this character in this patch. Murdoch uh, gets a little more health per level. This is like 70 health late game. It, it, this isn't going to change much. Muriel, a uh, slight mana cost decrease on her E, a very epic. Narbash gets some pretty big changes, actually. So Narbash has 100 more base mana than he did before. Unfortunately, he gains a lot less mana per level, so that late game, he actually has less mana than he does now. They're just front-loading this a lot. Uh, he also gets a bunch more... He gets a mana regen increase, which is really nice. His E, his heal... Now it has, it costs 20 mana per second at all ranks. Before it started at 10, scaled up to 30. It heals more at the early ranks to make up for this mana cost, obviously. If you're going to make it cost more, it's got to heal more. So late game heals the same, early game heals more. This now gives two stacks of his passive. For those of you who don't know what his passive is, when he auto stuff or uses abilities, he gains stacks, and the stacks do things for his abilities. So the stacks make his Q give more move speed, it makes his E heal more, it makes his right click have a, low, a lower cooldown, that kind of stuff. That means if you are if you have your E on late game, you can get 20 stacks from just your E. So you barely have to auto at all to get stacks off of this. This is, a, this is now a very good ability. Uh, right click on his thunk, mana cost increase, doesn't matter. This character is going to be pretty good this patch. 
Revenant. You guys can pause and read this wall of text if you guys would like. Otherwise, I'm going to explain it very shortly. Physical power goes down. You're not going to hit as hard level one. Increased attack speed. So this basic attack timer decrease. This is like time between shots or something like that. I don't know exactly what the what the wording on this is, but he, his attack speed is going up. His attack speed uh, at level one is going up and his attack speed throughout the game, he gains more attack speed per level. So it's um, it's a, it's a buff. He, has, he shoots faster. His Q gets a tiny bit of a damage nerf if you guys are building physical power and it gets a base damage nerf as well. But this consecutive missile modifier means that if you are hitting one person with all 10 shots of your Q, it will be doing roughly the same amount of damage because each successive one is doing more damage than it did before. If you guys are hitting a whole minion wave with this, it'll do a little bit less. It gets 100% magical power scaling, which combined with this consecutive missiles thing means that one shot, uh, you know, one shotting someone with a revenant Q is possible. Suffers from crunch syndrome where he can't make his Q do magical damage. It does physical damage. So if you're building full magical power, you can't do, like, you don't have any penetration. You're going to be hitting their armor. So it, I don't think the one shot build will really work, but possibly. Range gets increased. This is slightly longer than auto attack range now. Uh, his right click, the, the bonus missing health damage is decreased. So you'll be hitting a little less hard, but you crit a little bit better. So the crit late game, same amount, but front loading this a little bit. Make him stronger early game. So uh, And then his, uh, his E also has magic power scaling on it now, which is fine. Again, this ability actually does do magic damage, but it still is... This, this ability is kind of negligible damage. The slow is what matters. Uh, I think all in all, he'll be roughly the same power level. He'll be slightly better at auto attacking than he was before, but mostly the same power level. Richter, base health decrease. Severog. So Severog's getting uh, 10 more health per level. So late game, 180 more health. And he's getting a little bit more base physical armor. It's just going to be a slightly beefier. I think that's fine. Siphon gets five more base damage at all ranks. And his right click, his dash, gets a massive cooldown reduction. This was a 25 sec 24 second cooldown at rank one. Now it's going to be 20. It scales to the same. It will be 12 seconds late game. Uh, but... It used to be a crazy long cooldown early game. So now, now you'll be able to dash it all. Steel. You guys are going to be mad. The steel changes aren't very big, but the item changes are. So we'll get to that. Base damage on shield bash reduced a little bit. Stun duration reduced a little bit. And uh, the range reduced a little bit. So it, this used to be a, a deceptively long range where it was out of melee range. Now it's going to be closer to that melee range. The sh damage on his shield, on his shield wall, his E, walking through it, literally cut in half. I don't know why they do this, but I'm, I'm here for it. It's damage taken out of his kit, so I like it. Moving into the item changes. First off, Phoenix. Phoenix used to have a six-second window where you could die and come back. Now it is four seconds. It's a pretty big nerf. You just have to time it better. That's all. Brimstone. No longer draws tower aggro which is weird to me. I feel like this item should draw, it's dealing damage, it should draw tower aggro, but I don't know. Base damage, 20 to 12. So this is almost half base damage. Additional damage versus monsters, so versus jungle creeps, uh, increased. So it, this used to do 30 damage per tick to jungle monsters. Now it will deal 24 to jungle monsters. To players, this is just a nerf from 20 to 12. So clearing jungle will still be pretty good with this item, but hitting people will not be as good. Uh, assassin items. Malady. Uh, the demise scaling reduced. I don't know why this item is what's really getting hit. I think maybe carries were building it too much. Like you built this on Sparrow and Murdoch sometimes. And I think that's what they're trying to stop. Uh, this really only nerfs Kalari. But it's whatever. You might go back to Mind Razor. I'm not sure. Nightfall. Uh, just a bug fix. Just a description fix, really. Mage items. This is where it gets spicy. Astro Catalyst. Less mana, more power. Items still super niche. Arcane Magic. Azure, Azure Core. 3% mana to 4% mana. It's actually a lot. I had a game today where I was playing Bellica and I ended the game with 3,700 mana. So 3% of that is, you know, like just a little over 100, and 4% of that is like 140. It's a big change. It's, it's, a, it, there's a, this is, this is very, very impactful. You're going to have a lot more power late game on, on mages. And we'll get into some more stuff that will give you more power. 
combustion so the passive loses a little bit of base damage but gains a lot of scaling this is going to be a very very good item now i thought already thought this was a pretty good item now it's going to be very good keep in mind this had got more mana put onto it last patch so your Audra core is getting more value Dreambinder gets a little bit of a rework here it just gets a stat readjustment so it costs a little more mana or it costs a little more gold it gives 20 more power but 100 less health they're just trying to make this less of a super tanky item and more of a actual want to build this item still think this item is pretty dog golem's gift increased power doesn't matter still dog magnify increased power doesn't matter you only build this on one build still bad oath keeper this one's actually pretty good so you lose 50 health gain 10 power but the passive gains 10 percent scaling i think this is actually possibly good on bellica i think it might be good on fey you know on a, on a character where you want to weave in an auto attack i think that this can still be good i think it's better now than it was before this is obviously a buff we'll see how it goes oblivion crown uh bug fix now correctly displays the the what it should display Dispel Breaker, 5 power increase, still situational. Tainted Scepter, 5 power increase, still a really good item. This was already good. 5 power, epic. Time Warp. This is a full rework on this item. Well, mostly, mostly a full rework. Time Warp is now costs 3,300. This is a 600 gold increase on this item. This is no longer a support item. 100 magical power on this item now. Wild. The only other item with 100 magical power in its base is oblivion crown still has 15 armor and 15 haste the uh, first ability i believe this is pretty close i think this is a buff it grants six power and three armor uh for five seconds stacks up to five times so as long as you're casting abilities you're going to be getting more power and armor out of this so once you cast five abilities this is giving you 130 magical power it is giving you uh 330 physical armor and 15 haste on top of that, this has a small Chronos pendant on it, if you guys are smite players. So every five seconds, it subtracts half of a second from all your ability cooldowns. So it gives your abilities faster. This is gonna be a uh, this is gonna be the best item in the game, this patch. This is gonna be broken. 130 power on one item is already broken. Plus it gives armor, plus it gives haste, plus it gives you your cooldowns faster. This you're gonna buy this on every mage ever. It's gonna be broken. I promise. Really good. I like this rework. I like this idea. It's good. World Breaker fixed an issue where it could stack four times or five times instead of four. It was it says in game five times it's supposed to be four. It, each stack gives you four percent increased magical damage. So now it's it, it stacks to sixteen, not twenty. I low key think World Breaker is probably the most broken item in the game after this patch. Obviously, Time Warp is going to be really really good. World Breaker gives two percent of your max health as power. And mages in this game specifically have really high base health. I don't know why, they just do. So a mage late game has like 2,200 base health. With World Breaker that gives 300, you're at 2,500 base health. 2% 2 to that, 50, 50 power is what this is giving you as a bonus. On top of the 45 it already gives. So 95 power from one item on top of a passive that makes you deal more damage. You're, talk you're talking an item that gives more power than all the other mage items but also gives tenacity and health and more bonus damage i don't know why they haven't nerfed this item yet i think this item's really good i would build this item pretty much all the time tank items dynamo one percent scaling taken off the passive it, it's not enough this has 30 percent armor shred for four seconds after you hit someone that's the broken part the bonus damage is epic it's annoying but the the armor shred is is the broken part of this item Fire Blossom. So this one, you now can't you you can now not double stack Fire Blossom and Brimstone. I thought it was it's, it was really only troll before, but now you can't do it. This gets the same treatment as Brimstone. So base damage decreased. This still scales off of one point five percent of your bonus health as well. So ten damage taken off of this damage versus immobilized targets is increased to one hundred percent. So this does double damage to hard CC targets now. Uh, it will be slightly worse than it was before i am assuming my again i i don't know this for certain uh but i'm assuming that this is not getting hit as hard because carries are going to get buffed next patch that's that's my guess if i had to be completely honest because i don't think this is this is this is whatever 
your jungle clear is still going to be good. Your wave clear is still going to be good. Your pressure on enemies are going to be good with this. I still think it's good. That's, that's really all there is to it. I, I think this is still a very viable item. It's just not going to be super, super broken anymore. Raiment of Renewal. Haste decreased by 5. Doesn't matter. Uh, the passive changed. So it has still has one passive that it had before, which is when you take damage, regenerate 15% of it. That got buffed. It, it was 10%, now it's 15 New passive. Instead of gaining, or instead of increasing all healing received by 15%, now you are going to gain health regen equal to 1% of your bonus health. This is not out of combat. This is just all the time. 1% of your bonus health is health regen. It's not uncommon if you guys are building full tank to have, you know, 1,500 or so bonus bonus health so gaining 15 health regen pretty good i think this item is still going to be good you're still going to buy this on on tanks you're just not, probably not going to buy it on like i don't know uh every jungler ever basically you're not going to buy this on chimera tower changes towers do more base damage now they scale a little bit less per shot but the damage cap was increased so if somehow you're able to tank like eight shots from a tower they will do roughly the same damage they did before. It's just that that damage is front-loaded a little, and you will be getting hit harder, faster. This is a good change. I think that if this is true damage even, 130 is pretty low. I think this could go up, but I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if this change ha ha helps. I think towers are pretty weak right now. They don't do very much damage, so we'll see if this helps. Bug fixes. I don't really don't go over bug fixes too hard, but fixed improper aura stacking you're welcome epic games not epic games that was a joke hopefully you guys got that anyway uh aura is now stacked properly if you guys don't know about two weeks ago right before revenant came out i spent about two hours on stream testing auras and most of them stacked indefinitely even the offensive ones so citadel you could reduce someone's armor to zero flux matrix could make someone take 75 percent bonus magical damage uh now, offensive auras only apply once. You can only apply one Citadel to someone or one Flux Matrix to someone. However, uh, allied auras can apply twice. If you have the aura and a teammate has the aura, you can get both. So Marshall, yourself, and a teammate, you can get two Marshalls. Uh, Requiem, yourself has one and a teammate has one. You can get two Requiems. Uh, that's how it works now. Uh, other than that, these don't really matter. These are a bunch of, of updates. And that is the patch notes. It's not a huge patch. I, I won't lie. A lot of this stuff is just kind of bug fixes and uh, just super minor tweaks to some things. But I do think that there is some good stuff in here. I think this is a step in the right direction for tank items. I will say tainted uh, guard. No, what's it called? The the physical protection one that does dot damage to someone when you auto them. I, I don't know the item name off the top of my head. I think it's tainted guard, but I don't know. That item's broken. That item is crazy. Supports can't hit you when you have that item. So th I think that item needs needs looked at here. But other than that, this is a step in the right direction. Dynamo still OP. Fire Blossom is going to be like normally balanced now. Raiment will still be good. Other than that, mages are going to be a are gonna get a huge boost in this patch. So just watch out for mid laners. They're going to run you down. But that's all I've got for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed these patch notes. If you guys have more questions about anything, if there's something I didn't explain well enough, let me know down in the comments and I will try to explain some things more in depth for you if you didn't quite catch anything. But that's all I've got for you. This patch goes live Tuesday the 7th so you guys can uh, watch it here. I'll have gameplay for it as soon as I can. Otherwise, you guys can watch it live on twitch.tv slash pinzodunzo. I'll be streaming it all day and I will have some new content for you guys tomorrow so hopefully you guys are ready for that it's got uh it's just some fun stuff so i you guys you guys will enjoy it i promise that's all i've got for you though so as always i've been pinzo this video's done so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one